does get the ball, and he's going to take it for a Welcome to Cypress Field in Brookline. You're watching coverage of Brookline High School Athletics on BATV, and today it's softball action as the Walpole Rebels in town to take on the Brookline Warriors. Alongside Nick Bovee, I'm Brad Kasna, and uh, Nick, the Warriors coming to today's game still looking for that first win on the season. Yeah, they're coming into this 0-3, but this is their first home game of the year, and as usual, you hope that if you're home, you can play well in front of the home crowd, and they'll see if they can break that against the 2-1 Rebels. So Walpole and Brookline softball action coming up right here on BATV. Set. And we are ready to get underway here at Cypress Field. The first pitch of the ball game is bunted. Fair ball in front of the catcher. And reaching safely on that bunt base hit is Lauren Regan, the Rebels' leadoff hitter. That's a very interesting way to start it for Walpole. But, I mean, that's a good way to do it. It was just a simple little bunt right in front of the catcher and uh, able to get it out for a hit. So, one on, no out. It's Maeve Forty on the mound for the Warriors today. And now she'll deal with Bridget Nicholson. First pitch swing, foul ball right towards us. <laughs> So first pitch, a little bunt. Second pitch, rammed right towards us. We had to duck out of the way of that one. So an exciting beginning so far. So we're stationed down here on the third base line. So 0-1, the count on Nicholson. This one popped up. Catcher is under it and makes the out. So that was a nice job getting that high pitch there and getting Nicholson to pop it up right behind the plate. So an easy play, and that's the way you want to get your first out. Now Lauren Bowden comes to the plate. Standing in from the left side. Runner goes, and Regan into second with a stolen base. That was a conservative throw by uh, DeLeon behind the plate. Didn't want to throw it away, and that might be the best move there challenge, but don't overdo it. It's the boat, and this is swung on. A little popper into shallow center field. Regan will hold it third, and on the throw over to third, Bowden advances to second. There's a strong throw by Nolte in center field uh, over to third, and she actually underthrew the uh, third baseman and it bounced off of the runner. So it was a good thing that it hit her because it ended up saving the play there. Now Sam McChesney looks at strike one. So runners in the corners and one out in the top of the first inning, no score. Sorry, runners in second and third. And this is a line drive into center field over the leap of the center fielder. That'll score two runs. And McChesney on her way to third, and she's going to try to circle the bases. McChesney headed for home, and an inside the park home run for Sam McChesney puts the Walpole Rebels up 3 0 in the top of the first. That was a very solid hit in the center, just over the reach of Nolte. She tried to give it a chase and reach for the catch, but wasn't able to get it, and she had to get help from her left fielder. He was throw, able to throw it in, but just too late to get the runner. Now we say an inside the park home run, but there's really not much for fences here at, at uh, Cypress Field. The first pitch swinging going, is Jess Cocker, and she sends this one to pop up to center field. And there's two outs. So another solid hit into center. And this time Nolly was there and able to make the catch. Sixth batter of the inning now is Britt McGraw. Base is empty, two outs. Draw standing in from the left side. We're waiting on the pitcher to, to get settled in at the rubber. Infield has come way in now. 
Maybe expecting a bond. First pitch is low for ball one as McGraw takes a few steps forward. Maybe thinking about that drag bond. This one is popped back into the backstop. So one and one the count. McGraw's almost got to be a little careful there because she's. Uh She's trying to beat it out and try and slap it, but she's almost entirely out of the box by the time she gets the hit. If the umpire's aware, he might call her out on that. Stepping out, but missing. And do that, this is called a ball. Uh, I would call it a strike because she ended up crossing the plate with her bat. And that one hits the umpire. This ball is being vicious today. It's going for everybody. He's still a little stunned. He has to uh, take time to clear the plate, get his bearings. So now, that should be two and two. And just like you called it, Taking a few steps out of the batter's box was McGraw and called out for making contact outside of the batter's box. She would have been safe too because the throw over to first was dropped by the first baseman. But it won't matter and Walpole will get out of it with only three runs in the top of the first. So middle of the first inning and it's 3-0 Walpole. Brookline coming up next. Set to go in the bottom of the first inning. Warriors coming to the plate for the first time this afternoon. They will try to dig out of a 3 nothing hole. Lindsey Pearlstein leading it off for Brookline. Warriors first baseman. And the umpire called out both coaches to talk about something. It seems to be all square now. So Pearlstein awaiting the first pitch that swung on and fouled back behind home plate. That pitch was a little low from uh, pitcher Marin Hogue, but she does have a little speed on that one. This one swung on and right in front of the plate stays foul. So Pearlstein in an 0-2 hole. That ball spun in place right in front of the catcher, never left the box. This one a fly ball to left field and over the head of the left fielder. Pearlstein headed for second base. She will hold up there a leadoff double for Lindsey Pearlstein. Gets the Warriors going. So on an 0-2 count, I'm assuming Hope just left that one high and up. And Pearlstein was able to launch it over the left fielder, over the left fielder's head, Lauren Regan. So a solid double to lead off the bottom of the first. Now Kayla Montero, first pitch swing and fouls it back. Warriors, through their first three games, have yet to score a run this season. It's been a struggle on offense, but Pearlstein, the first batter to step up here at Cypress Field. Already in scoring position. And now headed for third, and she will make it. That was a very risky play by Lindsey Pearlstein. As it looked like the Warriors might have been trying a hit and run. Uh, it didn't really work at the plate, but Pearlstein was able to get into second. Almost overran the bag, too. Montero drops this one up the first baseline. And that's a fair ball. So Montero is aboard. Pearlstein had to hold it third but it puts runners in the corners with nobody out. Heading into the meat of the Brookline lineup. That one again spun in place on the line and uh, it was a good thing that the dirt here is a little thick, so I was able to make a crater and stay in one place and didn't roll around. So now Maeve Forty, the pitcher, that's in the number three spot. Runner goes and Montero into second without a throw. So that puts runners at second and third with nobody out at the bottom of the first inning. And maybe the, uh, the coach for Brookline knows a little something we don't in terms of the catcher's arm, because that's the second stolen base. 
there's a strike to 40. We saw the Rebels running early too. Sometimes at this level is this ball popped it behind home plate and out of the reach of the Warriors, or the Rebels catcher boat. So both teams are running early and often in this game. Warriors doing a good job of getting whatever they can off the pitcher, Hoke. This one fouled back off the catcher's mask. They've been getting contact on every pitch and uh, they haven't been settling for uh, taking any pitches. They've been swinging away. When there's uh, runners on second and third with no out, you're gonna be swinging. Ball there, throw comes down to third base, but back in time. And now headed for home is Pearlstein, but the throw will beat her, and Pearlstein runs it to an out at home. That might have been all Pearlstein on that one. As uh, it looked like the third base coach there in the, in the box kind of threw her hands up in the air after the run. I don't think she authorized that one. There's a strike to 40, so now it's a runner on second as that was strike three on 40, so 40 goes down looking. Runner on second and two outs for Tanisha DeLeon, the Warriors catcher and cleanup hitter. First pitch swinging and missing, strike one. Never really see all that much uh, battery going one, two in the lineup. Pitcher followed by your catcher. Runner goes for third and out at third is Montero, and that is the way this inning will end. So the Warriors run into a couple of outs on the base path, and after one inning, it is three nothing Walpole. All set to get underway in the second inning here at Cypress Field, Walpole with a three nothing lead. And Michaela Song in the number seven hitter leads things off for the Rebels. As the first pitch is low for ball one from 40. No pitch swung on, sent over towards the second baseman who has it on to first for the out. That was actually one of the more routine plays that we've seen Brookline make there is that one was a simple Ground ball to second, a little flick over to first, and first baseman had to back over and touch the bag, make sure she was on that one. Easy 4 3 put out, and that brings up Steph Sam. Sam takes the first pitch for ball one. One oh, low once again. Two and oh now, Sam had the count. Swung on, headed over in between the first and second baseman, but shallow in right field. The throw to first, not in time. Base hit for Sam. Pearlstein tried to make a, a stab at that one on the ground. Just got past her glove. She should be a little more uh, brave enough to dive for it, but instead they'll set up a double play situation here. Now Maddie Osher, the number nine hitter, Steps to the plate, the runner on first and one out. There's a strike. Looked like Sam was thinking about going at first. I think that's gonna be the theme of the day here. Uh, watch out for those runners on first because they will definitely try and take second. The 0-1 swung up the third baseline onto second and everybody's safe. That was a nice snare by the third baseman. Camille Long. The throw was a little low though, so Kayla Montero at second couldn't handle it cleanly and at least get the lead runner. So now it's first and second, one out. Back to the top of the order for Lauren Regan, who led off the ball game with a bunt single. Swinging this time and popping it up behind the backstop. The 
Sam at second, Osher at first. As the Rebels try to add to a 3 nothing lead. 0-1 pitch as low, gets away from the catcher. Runners will advance. And DeLeon was gonna just eat that. She wasn't even gonna give it a throw as that one went all the way slowly to the backstop. By the time she got it, the runners were at second and third already. So now two runners in scoring position. 1-1 one, one count on Regan at the plate. has to take care of the batter at the plate herself. Try and get a K here. She's throwing strikes, which is a good sign. Another one-two pitch. And this one's not a strike, so I even count it two and two. She's not gonna wanna let this count go full. She's gonna have to throw a strike here, even if it means giving up a little bit on the speed and possibly giving up a good hit. 2-2 pitch, swung on in the air to center field. That'll drop in for a base hit. Should score a pair. Regan on her way to third base as the throw comes back in. And it is a two-run triple for Lauren Regan. Puts the Rebels up 5-0. So she split the outfielders in right center. Went all the way out towards the soccer goal post. Out in right. And that was another strong throw by Jay Nolte in center. But not as accurate, though. She had a little bit more accuracy. She could have gotten the runner at third. It is though she was able to prevent Regan from circling the bases for the Rebels' second home run of the game. As we mentioned, most of the home runs you see here will be inside the park as they should be swinging and miss the first pitch to Nicholson. Closest fence is down the right field line, even that's pretty deep, but down left field it just goes forever. Ball in the dirt, and it's one and one on Nicholson. Nicholson popped up to the catcher in the first inning. Had a chance to do some damage here though with a runner on third and one out. This one grounded past the shortstop into left field. Regan comes in to score. Nicholson's into second base. An RBI double for Bridget Nicholson. And the Rebels take a 6 0 lead. And Sarah Pratt at short tried to give it a stab, but Ellen moved a little bit too fast on her, took a weird bounce, got over her glove, and into left field. So, yet another hit for the top of the lineup. Now, four straight hits for the Rebels after Forty set down the leadoff batter this inning. Now Lauren Bowden looks to the ball. Bowden singles her first at bat. Another ball, this one gets behind the catcher. Not too far, but enough for Nicholson to move up to third base. Runner on third and one out now for Bowden. Pitch is high. I'm surprised the umpire didn't give it to her. After the kind of inning that Forty's gone through, last inning and this inning, anything close has to be a strike. That's a 3 0 count now. And this one, whoa, gets away. Runner's going to try to score from third, and she will. So a walk issued to Bowden. The 
first walk of the day, but Nicholson able to come in to score on the wild pitch. And Forty had to cover home plate there as she sent to Leon over to the backstop on the wild pitch. That's gonna come with time to instinctively know to go and run and cover home because otherwise no one's there and it's an easy run scored for the other team. Both ends of the battery today as a strike into Sam and Chesney. Both pitcher and catcher today new to the varsity squad this season for the Warriors. This one grounded past the shortstop into center field. Base hit for McChesney. That one went straight up the middle in between second and short. Nolte cut it off, got it in quick enough in order for the runner to be held at second. So first and second with one out now. Walpole a seven nothing lead in the top of the second. Jess Cochran at the plate, looks at a strike. Cochran flew out to center field in her first at bat. one pitch, this is. It served it as a de facto pitch out. So it looked like both runners looked like they were considering going, especially Bowden in second. One one to Cochran. Swung on, grounded foul at the first base side. So one and two now. left side, another base hit. Bowden will pull up at third base, but that loads the bases with one out. Pratt tried to dive again, wasn't able to get down low enough and quick enough in order to get the ball, but it was there for her. If uh, she could have gotten it in time, but instead it led into left field. So now Britt McGraw steps to the plate, with the bases loaded, one out in the top of the second. McGraw ended the first inning being called out for making contact outside of the batter's box as she was the entire at bat trying to take a few steps forward in that swing, but came out of the box and was called out on it. And interestingly enough, the umpire outlined the box for her to let her know how far she could go before getting called out. So that was his, his way of giving a warning there. First pitch is a ball. One out swung on, grounded slowly to the shortstop. Throw comes home, but not in time. Great, almost a, really kind of a swing bunt there from Britt McGraw, moves all the runners up the base and scores a run. And Walpole takes an eight nothing lead. And Walpole has now batted around in this inning. They've only gotten one out as uh, Songin comes back up to the plate. First pitch of ball to Michaela Songin. She grounded out to the shortstop to lead off this inning. But since then, every Rebel batter has reached base. This one grounded foul. Evens the count at one and one. Base is still loaded with one out. Going back to that infield single that scored that last run, there was a miscommunication between the pitcher, the shortstop, the third baseman. Third baseman kind of went out to go get it, but that was the pitcher's ball to go get. She should have covered third, maybe the backup should have been with the shortstop. So that kind of mis miscommunication directly led to a run. Pitch is low to Sonja. It's the type of thing, you know, still only the fourth game of the season, so perhaps that will improve with time, a little more experience. As you mentioned, it's the Warriors' first home game of the year. As this one's high, count is two and two. 
steeper climb as open up the season with losses at Need of Norwood and Braintree on the road, but finally getting to open up Cypress Field. Pop up here, first baseman under it, makes the catch. Looks like the, uh, the umpire in your third called an infield fly anyway before the catch was made. So that works out well for Brookline. So now two outs, base is still loaded, and Steph Sam up to the plate for the second time this inning, singled her last at bat, and this one a high fly ball to center field, under it, making the catch are the Warriors, and that will retire the side, but not before Walpole pushes five more runs across the plate. The Rebels take an eight nothing lead in the middle of the second. Bottom of the second about to get underway with the Rebels of Walpole leading the Warriors of Brookline by an 8 nothing margin. And Tanisha DeLeon will lead things off for the Warriors here. DeLeon was at the plate when Kayla Montero was caught stealing to end the first inning. So she'll lead things off with a fresh count here at the bottom of the second. Despite being down eight nothing after an inning and a half, Brookline has to be encouraged that their first two batters were able to get on base with hits. And the rest of the lineup hasn't had a chance to hit yet, so we'll see how they can do these next couple innings. It's gonna be very important to see. First pitch for Marin Hope misses for ball one. Swing of a miss there from De Leon. We have the count at one and one. On one pitch, swung on line right back to the pitcher. And there's the first out. That was a fantastic snare by Hogan at the rubber. She didn't even need to move, just stuck her glove up, caught it. That could be a very scary thing for a pitcher, but she didn't seem to show any fear there. And not much time. To react. So now Jay Nolte puts the ball one. Nolte, the center fielder for the Warriors. Swing and a miss. I'll leave the count at one and one. Hogue is working quickly here. Hogue seems to be running two different pitches here fastball and a changeup. She's been going primarily fastball, but doing a nice job of changing things up on the batters and getting them to swing at pitches away out of the zone. 2-1 count now. Slow roll right back to Hogue on to first base. And there's two down. Mobile doesn't even seem to need defense here. All they have to do is keep Hogue out there and she's gonna make, make the outs for them. First pitch swinging, ground ball to second, and Sarah Pratt is down for the third out of the inning. So a one, two, three inning for Marin Hogue and the Walpole Rebels. And at the end of two innings, it is an eight nothing lead. Walpole over Brookline. Ready to get things going in the top of the third. It is an eight nothing game in favor of Walpole. We're at Cypress Field at Brookline High School. And leading things off is number 11, Maddie O'Shea. She's 0 for 1. She reached on a fielder's choice back in the last inning. So we're just waiting on a, a pitcher to step up to the rubber here. It's going to be 40. She's just getting her gear on near the bleachers, it looks like. It looks like maybe the athletic trainer might be doing a little bit of work on her. Something. And it's interesting, too, because 40 doesn't, didn't bat that last inning, so she could have gotten this work done earlier, but instead of uh, taking her time, and now she's ready to go. So here's 
O'Shea. First pitch is high and outside for ball one. Here's a slap roller over to short. Gets past Pratt, and it will be a leadoff single here in the third. As both the third baseman and the uh, shortstop both had an attempt at it. But again, miscommunication on the left side of the field led to a hit. Second hit of the day for Osher. So that's going to bring up the leadoff hitter, Lauren Regan. She is two for two with a bunt single in the first and a triple back in the second. That triple scored two runs. Now the 1-0. Outside, it's 2-0. not leave from first. Warriors paying attention to that runner over there. We'll see if she looks to go later in the at bat. Ball is grounded right in front of the plate and foul. That one went straight back. Actually, it looked like that was not Oshi that, that was at the plate that got the single. Instead, it was Marissa Ryan. So. Walpole doing an early substitution, giving O'Shea only one bat. And the 2-0 pitch is out, or the 2-1 pitch, excuse me, is outside, so now it's three and one. Three one bounces to the plate, and that's a walk. So the first two batters are on base to start out the third inning, and that'll bring up Bridget Nicholson. One for two with a double. Stole third and then scored on the wild pitch. Second walk of the day for 40. But walks have been a problem for the Warriors in the past, so it's definitely a positive sign that 40 today throwing strikes. Runner going to third and second on the pass ball. So now two in scoring position with no out for Nicholson. for a strike. Or he hasn't been getting a lot of those looking strikes. And now this one is slapped into left field. It'll split the outfielder, so both runs will score as it's going to be Jay that runs it down. And Nicholson will slowly run into home. It's going to be an inside the park home run for Nicholson. Three more runs score for Walpole. So now it is an 11 to nothing ball game. And you can hear Walpole's coach, Jim Duffy, tell his runner to slow down. No need to injure yourself trying to run the bag at third when the throw was nowhere close to coming in. And we mentioned how there's really no fences here at, at uh, Cypress Playground. And one of the things that means is if that ball gets past the outfielders, it just keeps on rolling. There's no, there's no outfield fence for it to stop up against. So. It's uh, tough for the fielders in outfield once it gets by, especially in that center field, left field area. So we have a pinch hitter now for Lauren Bogue, who is one for one with a liner back in the first and a walk in the second. So Colleen Semler. Semler, you could read that there. Yeah. No outs. Here's the pitch. That one bounces to the plate. You got a lady over here. It's a 3 0 count. Slowly goes in there. He's going to get the benefit of the call there. 
since that one was over the plate. Someone was going to take on that 3-0. out of the inning. And there's a swing and a miss. And Forty gets her first K of the game. Great at bat there for Forty on the mound. She was able to fight back and get the K after going down 3-0. And now the pitch to Natalie Light bounces up to the plate. Light's going to take over for Sam McChesney, who is two for two with a home run back in the first and a single in the second. That pitch is a strike. It's 1-1. One, one. Strike two. So now all of a sudden, Forty is feeling it. After letting the first three batters get on base, and now it's a little ground right in front of the plate. It's going to be a throw out to first, so now there are two down. You know, I'm not sure Lydon actually, if she made contact with that, that may have just been a, uh, a strikeout that the catcher dropped and had to throw it out to first. Tough to tell, but uh, either way, 40 throwing strikes, and Warriors coach Coley Ferrara was saying that's one of the things she likes about her. This one is a high fly ball into center, and it'll just get past the reach of the center fielder, Nolte. Oh, yeah. So it'll be a two out double for Jess Cochran, her second hit of the game. No, I just Got a single to back in the last inning. So a runner in scoring position with two outs for Walpole. So that'll bring up Britt McGraw. That pitch bounces to the plate. Runner will stay at second as DeLeon came from behind the plate to threaten the throw there. And that pitch is a strike on the outside. Swing and a miss. So this one goes to the backstop. So Cochran will take third on the pass ball. Two out. Runner on third now. Well, he has two strikes on the batter. Just needs to seal the deal here. That one's too far inside. into left field. Runner is going to score on the hit. So another run for Walpole. With two outs is now a runner on first. Good job by Gabby St. Pierre there in left field to stop that ball from getting past her. You know, that's really in this outfield uh, the most important thing the outfielders can do because that ball gets past her. We're talking multiple bases. So now here is Michaela Song, and so that pitch gets past DeLeon, but runner will not leave from first. That pitch is low. It's 2 and out. It is now 12 nothing in favor of Walpole. So we're in the top of the third. There's a strike on the outside. It's two and one against Sanga. Brooklyn has yet to get all the way through their lineup. As this one goes up the middle and another hit for Walpole. So the runners at first and second. The throw comes in a little wild to the second baseman. A 
but the runners will stay at first and second with two out. And now that'll bring up another pinch hitter for Walpole, for number 10, Julie Oser. Two out, two on. Pitch from 40. Yeah. No. It's gonna be called for a strike on the outside half of the plate. at the bottom of the third at Cypress Field. And leading off is Brookline's left fielder, Gabby St. Pierre. She is yet to record an at bat. As uh, Walpole's pitcher, Marin Hogue, has been pitching very well. She gave up two hits to lead off the game for Walpole. But since then, it has cruised along and has still faced the minimum number of batters because both of those uh, batters that reached to lead the game off of Brookline ran into outs of the base pass. 2-0. Swing and a miss. She was well over that pitch. But it is excusable on a 2 or nothing count. She's still ahead. Now a tip and back to the backstop, so it's now even at two against St. Pierre. So the sun has seemed to have gone behind the clouds now. It's a little cooler out. <coughs> Definitely windy. It's been windy the whole game. It's been working for Walpole as they've been getting some nice deep flies into the outfield. So now it's a full count to St. Pierre. And there's a swing and a miss drop at the plate, but the throw will go over to first, and there's now one away. So that's the second strike out of the game for Hogue. She got made 40 back in the first inning looking. That's like that comes swinging. And now that will bring up the right fielder, Celine Gadwell. That pitch is outside. And she's out ahead of that one. It's now one and two and one, excuse me. Swinging and missing with a pitch on the outside. Count is even at two now. Oh, trying to get her third strike out of the game. This one is a ground ball to short. Bobbled by the shortstop, and it will stay inside. And it's going to be an error on the shortstop, but Brookline will take the runner at first. Pitches outside, taken by the designated player, Sarah Ann Rosenthal. Kayla Songen is the shortstop that misplayed that, that ball on the previous hit bat. Songen fouls one behind the backstop, so it's now 1-1. So we'll see if the Warriors can capitalize on that mistake. She 
He's going to let this one go by her. Runner will take second on the wild pitch. So now just like that, Brookline has a runner in scoring position. Only one out. I think Brookline's going to be a little more conservative here. Just try and get runs. Don't try and be aggressive. That pitch is outside. So that's two and one. Three and one. Winging and missing over the pitch is Rosenthal, and that'll even the count, or load up the count at three and two. And now there's a strikeout. Swinging and missing is Rosenthal on the pitch on the outside, so strikeout number three for Hope. Two down, and that'll even bring up the top of the order with Lindsey Perlstein. Side, ball one. And runner will stay in second. Nice stop behind the play by Semler. And Pearlstein did hack at that one. She didn't want it, but she had momentum and her bat ended up crossing the plane. So now it's one and one. A ground ball right back to Hope. She'll throw to first, and that one will be the third out. So Brookline does get one on base, but they can't do anything with it. It's still 12 0 as we head to the top of the fourth. So, welcome back to Cypress Field at Brookline High School. Brookline is trailing 12 0 to Walpole as we start the top of the fourth inning. Leading us off will be number 17, Marissa Ryan. Ryan is one for one with a single. She led off the top of the third, taking over for Maddie O'Shea. That pitch is inside. And it's quickly 2 and 0 oh to Ryan. Slapper back to Forti at first, and she will throw to first. A little low, but a nice dig at first keeps it in play. Yeah, Pearlstein had plenty of time to dig that one out and get set to step on the bag. So one away, and that'll bring up the top of the lineup with Lauren Regan. She pops one up into center. And uh, quickly, two outs for Brookline as Nolte makes the play in center. Three pitches and two outs for a 40, and she couldn't ask for anything more, really. No, it's the first inning this ball game that the Warriors have retired the first two hitters. And so Bridget Nicholson is at the plate. She'll take one low and away. Nicholson is two for three with a double and a home run. That one is in the dirt and it's two now. scored by Walpole in this game. This one's a ground ball to third. Stop. And it will be held onto by number two, Camille Long. So Brookline isn't able to get a one, two, three inning here, but it will be a runner on first with two outs for number 19, Semler. Tough play there for Lon, and by the time she's able to collect the ball, no time to get it all the way across the diamond. That pitch is in the dirt. It will go to the backstop, and Nicholson will take second.
Pitch popped up and over to short. And Pratt is there for the third out, so a nice inning for Brookline. They trail 12 nothing, but they're able to get three outs and four batters, so job well done for them. Ready to go here in the bottom of the fourth. Leading us off is the second baseman, Kayla Montero. That pitch is low. 1-0. Walpole has gathered 15 hits so far and has scored 12 runs. Brookline has yet to get a run across, but they have registered two hits. So now the 1-1. Inside, and it's 2-1 and one to Montero. She is one for one with an infield single back in the first inning. That pitch is low, so now it's three and one. Now it's three. Or no, yep, that was a walk. <laughs> so Montero didn't know she was able to take first. She is the first Brookline batter to get on base twice. So you had it right, everybody else had lost cash. <laughs> I thought I wasn't going crazy. So now that'll bring up the pitcher, May 40. She's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. The pitch almost clips her in the feet. Run, runner will go to second. Montero was a little late on the hop there, but the throw was wide and to the left, so she'll easily take second. Yeah, it looked like Montero. Maybe that was a hit and run. It looked like she was going, but then hesitated a little bit when she wasn't sure. Now throw into third, and Montero's going to be out by two or three feet. So more aggressive running from Montero. That's the second time she's been thrown out trying to go to third. She is the first out now. It looks like the Warriors, though, when they get aboard, are trying to be aggressive on the base pass and really test the Rebels' defense. outside and it's 2-0 oh. and that would have been the pitch for Montero to go on so that one went all the way to the backstop now foul ball and into the parking lot just missed a car Bounces up to the plate, and that'll be another walk. Brookline gets their second batter of the inning on base. So it'll be interesting to see here what Forty does on the base path. Says every Brookline base runner that's been aboard so far has uh, at least attempted to advance a base, whether it be uh, a straight steal or on a wild pitch. But three of the four base runners have been thrown out on the base path. So that'll bring up her battery mate, Tanisha DeLeon. Pitches outside. DeLeon is 0 for 1. She lined out to Hogue to lead off the second inning. Now a ground ball to first. Easy play. And there is now two down as Marissa Ryan easily stepped on the bag. The fielder's choice there. And Ryan opting for the easy out right there at first rather than trying to turn that double play, go down to second and wait for the ball to come back. And Jay Nolte, the center fielder, will step up. She fouls the first pitch up into the tree behind home plate. Runner on second and two down for Brookline. go to the backstop and not paying attention at second is Brookline now 
And here's a ground ball past first base. Runner will hold up at first and finally come in to score. As Jay Nolte will step into second. It'll be an error on the first baseman. An unearned run for Hogue, but it is Brookline's run, their first of the ball game, and it's 12-1. And their first ball game of the season, it looks like it was uh, Billy Don McMartin who came in as a pinch runner there that scored that run, and the Warriors on the board. Yeah, Billy Don McMartin, McMartin, excuse me, pinch running for the pitcher. May 40. So now that'll bring up number three, Sarah Pratt. Ground ball back up to the pitcher. Hogue will throw to first, get the third out. So that'll end the inning. But Brookline will get the run across. They trail 12 to one. So ready to go in the top of the fifth. It's 12-1 in favor of Walpole. May 40 will re-enter the ball game at pitcher after getting pinch run for in the bottom of the fourth. First batter she faces is ground ball back up to 40. She throws her out at first. And now is Natalie Lydon. So one away on one pitch. Up number 12, Jess Cochran now. Ooh, right back to 40, and she is down on her knees after she got beaned by a pitch. That was a line drive, got her right in the arms. It has just not been 40's day. Yeah, that was one of the hardest hit balls we've seen all afternoon. 40 did all she could to try and block it and get it down, but she wasn't able to get it in time. So now it's going to be Gabby St. Pierre taking over for her, coming out of left field to take over at the rubber. So we'll take a quick break as uh, St. Pierre gets ready to pitch here in the top of the fifth. So ready to get things going in the top of the fifth. There's already one out, one on. New pitcher on the mound is Gabby St. Pierre as that pitch is bounced up to the plate to Britt McGraw. So Cochran ended up lining a pitch right to 40. It got her in the wrist, and she has now left the park. I am presuming to go get x-rays on that wrist, because that one got her good. And there are a bunch of little bones in the wrist, so any kind of ball that hits there with significant speed, it's gonna be, it's gonna cause some damage. Yeah, 40 tried to make a play on that, but just couldn't get the glove there in time as that ball was a laser right back to the mound. It's now the 2-0 from St. Pierre. It's a ground ball to third. Picked up and throw to second, not in time. As Long wasn't able to get over to the ball in enough time to make the play. That's one of those kind of swinging bunts as it was such a slow roller up the line that by the time the fielder could get to it, no time to make the out either second or first. Strike called to the current batter, Michaela Songen. That pitch went to the backstop, but it was foul tip. So two on with one out. 0-1 count against Songen. St. Pierre taking over on the mound for 40 and taking over for St. Pierre in left field was the designated player Sarah Ann Rosenthal. She's there right now. The 
a one. Liner back up and through into center. That'll bring in one run as it gets past right field. Runners will stay at second and third. Missed play over in right field by Celine Gadway. So now second and third with one out. And that'll bring up Julie Oser. Yeah, this outfield is so challenging to play. You see it there once again. The ball, once it gets by the field, it just keeps on rolling. And it can cause a lot of trouble. So not much margin for error in the outfield. Uh, first pitch to Oser was high, but a nice stop by DeLeon. That one bounces to the plate. So St. Pierre can't find her rhythm. She's going high, she's going low, she's bouncing pitches up to the plate. But DeLeon doing a nice job of making sure nothing gets by her. 2-0. That one's in the dirt, and that one will get by her. Looks like it, actually after it hit the dirt, that uh, Oser kicked it up with her heel, probably inadvertently, but it knocked it over to the backstop. Stop a 3 -0. And there's a strike. It's now 3-1 count against Oser. Kind of a tough spot for St. Pierre to come in. Uh, to replace 40 on the injury. You know, wasn't really probably expecting to be pitching in this situation, but there she is on the mound, or in the circle, rather. And that ball goes to the backstop, but it doesn't matter as it's a walk anyway to Oser. So now the bases are loaded with one out. And that'll bring up the first baseman, Marissa Ryan. So now, right, uh, Jim Duffy coming up to the umpire. Looked like he was going over lineup change. He's reinserted Maddie Osher at this spot in the lineup. So I'm not sure if he's made other moves in conjunction with that or just to make sure everything's squared away on this move. Shea's, uh, one for two with a single and a fielder's choice. There's a strike on the outside. Swing and a miss. And now it is 0-2. Ready, and the pitch, foul back. St. Pierre seems to be confident now that she has this 0-2 count. She can leave it out over the uh, outside part of the plate if she wants to. Try and get O'Shea to swing. She bounces one to the plate outside. So now it is one and two. On deck is leadoff hitter Lauren Regan. That pitch is high. It is two and two now. Three and two. Oh, two and two, excuse me. And there's the strikeout. Pitch looking on the outside half of the plate. So now there are two down. That's a big out with the bases loaded. A great at bat for Gabby St. Pierre after coming in cold from left field and allowing the first three batters to reach. Gets a strike out there on Osher. That pitch is outside to Regan. Regan's had a busy day so far today. She is 
two for three. Bunt, a triple, a walk. She flew out to center field back in the fourth. Dropped by Long, she isn't able to get the throw into third in enough time, so the run will score. And it is now 14 to one in favor of Walpole. So now Bridget Nicholson will step back up to the plate. is low. Nicholson is three for four with a double, a home run, and a single. So Nicholson a triple away from the cycle. Can she do it? That pitch is high, 2-0. Oh. At this field, you never know. You know, something into the outfield can start rolling. Stop. All the runners will stay. It's Regan at first, Oser at second, and Songin at third. The pitch. Brown ball to second. Throw over to shortstop, but was covering. Sarah Pratt was staying at short. The throw should have been to first, but instead the inning will go on as another run scores. You know, that may be just another one of those early season miscommunications between the fielders for Brookline. So now that'll bring up Colleen Semler. Side, almost got her on the arm there. Bases loaded and two outs. It is 14 to one and 15 to one, excuse me, in favor of Walpole. Pitch is bounced up to the plate. It's two and a. Semler is yet to get a hit. She struck out and flew out to short. Pitch is high and away, and it's 3-0. and No place to put Semler as the bases are loaded. Ball four outside, so a four pitch walk brings in another run, and it is 16 to 1 in favor of Walpole. It's the second walk this inning as the Rebels have now batted around here in the fifth. It's Natalie Leiden, according to the first out of the inning. That one was on a ground ball back to the pitcher. First pitch of the inning, too. That one's outside, 2-0. batter inning last inning and getting it out on the first pitch of this inning. It looked like things were going well for May of 40, but then she took a line drive to her wrist. She has left the ball game.
So I believe Forty will be credited with 13 runs against her. That pitch is low and another walk. So another run will score and it is now 17 to one in favor of Walpole. So St. Pierre struggling to find the plate here will bring out a visit from the Warriors pitching coach. Message is probably just throw strikes. Yep, just trust your defense. It's been working uh, pretty well for the Warriors. Yeah, just leave it up. Try and give up a hit. It's better than giving up walks and prolonging the inning. And there's a ground ball to second. Knocked down. No play, though. As that was Kayla Montero who knocked it down but wasn't able to get a throw off. So another run scores. 18 to 1 in favor of Walpole now. Hard hit ball there. And the runner bang right down on her. Montero just not able to collect it in time. So it's Semler at third, Leiden at second, Cochran at first for Britt McGraw. Bounce to the plate. I believe it actually hit the umpire's leg and kicked back out to save the run there because St. Pierre wasn't going towards the plate. She was staying at the rubber. And the one out. That was outside the box. No play though. And they're gonna call the runner out at the plate. I think that's the umpire's way of getting the inning over. So more run score for Walpole. It is now 18 to one in favor of the Rebels as we approach the bottom of the fifth here at Cypress Field. So we are set to begin the bottom of the fifth at Cypress Field. Brookline trails Walpole 18 to one and that'll bring up the pitcher, Gabby St. Pierre. Recorded the last out of the top half of the inning. Ground ball back towards the pitcher. Threw home and got the runner. She was trying to score and beat the throw. So Pierre is 0 for 1 with a strikeout back in the third inning. The 0 1 runs inside, and it's 2 0. Side. It's a 3 0 count for St. Pierre. Swing and a miss, and it's 3 and 1. That was her pitch to hit, she just swung over it. over that one too, three and two. So if Hogue knows what she's doing, she's gonna leave that next pitch right in that same spot. And there it is. Three consecutive pitches in the same spot. Gets St. Pierre swinging and there's one away. So that's the fourth strikeout of the day for Hogue. Second time she's got St. Pierre swinging. Now Celine Gadway step up to the plate. Takes a strike. Right fielder reached on an error by the shortstop in the third. Now reaches for one. And it's 0-2 against her. And ground ball to third. Shortstop will make the play and make the out. Nice throw by Michaela Song. And there was a diving stop by the third baseman, Cochran. She ended up tipping the ball towards Song and who was able to make the throw. 
Yeah, fortunate on both ends there that Cocker tipped the ball right in the right direction for Sanya. And Sanya able to just beat out the runner with that throw over to first. It's now the left fielder. Sarah Ann Rosenthal steps up to the plate with two outs. She'll line one towards second. And easy flip to first. And that'll end the inning. And that one will leave it 18 to 1 in favor of Walpole. And I believe that that one will also end the game as both teams line up. Walpole will mercy out Brookline. It's an 18 to 1 final at Cypress Field. So it's an 18 to 1 final in favor of Walpole here at Cypress Field. And Brad, if you could say that this was a, uh, the story of the game, it was basically two pitchers against each other for Brookline. May 40 had a not so good game, while Walpole, it was uh, Marin Hogue that had a fantastic game. Yeah, Hogue was uh, excellent, uh, pitched a, a great ball game, um, had, had I think it was four strikeouts, uh, and really kept Brookline from, from threatening on the base paths. Uh, the Warriors were able to push across that one run, which is their first run of the season. So certainly uh, a high point there for the Warriors on offense after being shut out in their first three games. But uh, for the most part, uh, Marin Hogue in the circle for Walpole really shut down the Brookline offense. For May 40, she ended up leaving the game. She got hit with a, a comebacker, got it right in the wrist. She left the game, so hopefully she's okay. But Brad, who would you say is your player of the game? Well, I mean, for the... Uh, Walpole offense, they scored 18 runs, so they were really uh, getting it done offensively. Bridget Nicholson went four for five with a home run, a double, two singles, and five RBI. So Nicholson really uh, driving the Rebels offense today as they were able to put 18 runs on the board. So it's an 18 to one final. Brookline falls to 0-4 while Walpole improves to 3-1. For Brad Kastnett, I'm Nick Bovey reporting for BATV here at Cypress Field.